here, but it's not a competition, but it's kind of a competition. Who are we kidding? I don't know if I have a, we do, let's go ahead and play that. Well, good morning. Yeah, that's on. I'm so glad that you're here. If we haven't met, my name is Jason. I am the pastor here at Faith Discovery Church, and it's an honor to have you here with us today. Now, I, there's a lot of stuff going on like we talked about. We have uh, boxes, and we're going to deliver those later today. We have uh, a bunch of people who are going to be baptized here in just a few minutes, and I have a strict time frame that I have to make for my message for everything to work. And if you know me, you know I'm not great at that. So uh, if you could pray for me uh, while we do that, that's, that's good. But no like tangents, I, I promise, kind of, my fingers are crossed. But if you're new with us this morning, thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's, uh, we're we're going to continue a series called Friendsgiving, and I want to uh, thank you for spending a little bit of your Sunday with us. I want to say hello to everybody joining us online. It's so awesome to have you. Sorry about my microphone issues just a few minutes ago. That was my fault, not our tech team. Who, our, By the way, our tech team does an awesome job. Uh, give it up for them. Today is a day that some of us will never forget. Um, it's a special day for, 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 for our church. Anytime we do a baptism Sunday, it's a special day. It's a day we get to celebrate with people. But for the people who are being baptized, this is a day that, that is a seminal moment in their faith journey. It's a day they'll never forget. It's a special day when, when, um, when friends and family, for a lot of people, are invited to, to witness it or maybe be a part of it. Um, it's, a, it's an invitation day. And if we're honest, uh, all of us like receiving invitations. We all, we all like that. We don't always want to say yes to whatever we're invited to, but it's nice to be included, whether it's to a meal or a wedding or, or a concert. Oftentimes there's, a, there's an invitation uh, that's printed on a little card, and then there's these cryptic letters that all of us know what they mean, but none of us really know what they mean, RSVP. Um, uh, but uh, you don't really need to know. What does that mean? It means they want you to tell them that they're coming. But really, what does it mean? Nobody knows. There are some people who know what it means. But what it means, we know what it means. In, in Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse 25 through 30, Jesus speaks, and he speaks what are some of the most tender and uh, uh, appealing words he ever offered when he offers this invitation. He says, uh, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by the Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and to those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And then Jesus says, come to me. All you are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke on you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This morning I want to talk about two invitations that Jesus makes and two statements that he makes about himself as he pre preceding those invitations. These two statements offer a lot about the knowledge of God. The, uh, the, uh, the, in fact, it, it, Jesus talks about it. It's, it, it's really using the word reveal. Jesus reveals God. God, the first thing, if you're taking notes on your app or if you're taking notes in the bulletin, and by the way, we had like 
more than 20 people used the app for their notes last week and people told me they emailed them to, that's awesome. I'm glad you're able to do that. Encourage you to do that. First thing is God is revealed through Jesus. Matthew 27, Jesus explains, nobody knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Only Jesus knows the full aspect of who God is. And so only he or Jesus can make the Father known. We can see partially in other ways and, and in the order of, the, of loveliness in the in the created universe. Romans chapter 1 talks about how God is revealed even in nature. But we see it in the, in the moral demands of consciousness. So we see it in the unfolding developments of history. Yet even through, even though creation reveals God's glory, it re- reveals conscious, the conscious of his righteousness and the history of his power and providence. Nothing or no one reveals God's love to humanity and his plan to redeem us except for Jesus Christ. That is why every question about Christianity starts with who Jesus is. There, there's, there's no fanfare of trumpets. There's no boasting. There's no ostentation. Uh, Jesus' manner is altogether unaffected. And yet there he is in the middle of the Middle East, in the middle of the Middle East, declaring to call the Lord of heaven and earth his father and saying that he himself is the father's only son stating that all things have been delivered to him by the Father. In other words, he's saying, I'm the heir of the universe. And he's claiming that he knew God and that God knew him. In other words, there exists between the Father and Son a uniquely intimate and uh, uh, reciprocal relationship If we want to know God, Jesus is the pathway to him. And so as we think about Jesus' invitations, this first statement that Jesus is the way to know God is is a prerequisite for us to understand the fact of the, the amount of trust we can place in Jesus' invitation. It's as if he comes with a seal of approval. Now, some of us have seen pieces of art. And sometimes an original piece of art will have, if if you take it off the wall, on the back it'll have an envelope. It'll have an envelope and it'll have a, a letter inside with a certificate of authenticity. Jesus didn't walk around with an envelope or certificate of authenticity stapled to his back. But in theory, this is Jesus saying, here's my letter of authenticity. Here's how you can say, you can trust my invitation and all that comes with it because this is who I am and this is what I offer. I offer a pathway to the Father. No other religious teacher in history had dared to make the claim that God is revealed fully and completely in them. But Jesus does that. And then Jesus says, and God reveals himself to little children. Which also in a society of honor and a society of status and uh, and, uh, hierarchy. Little children are very low on that status, on on those rungs. Yesterday we were replacing some ceiling tiles in the cafe 
and that required some use of ladders and that required some use of scaffolding. And someone said uh, they climbed on the first, le- the first layer of the ladder, the first step. That's what it was called. Why couldn't I figure out that word? The first step of the ladder. And they said, hey, Pastor Jason, this is a good step for you. One step up. Probably if the ladder fails when you're on it at this, you won't get hurt. Now that may not have what they were saying. They were really saying you're a lot taller than me and you could probably reach. But what I chose to hear was a fat joke. The first step on the ladder is really low. In Judean culture, that's where children were. They were at the bottom of the, sta- of the level. And so in, John, in, 11, in Matthew eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus prays, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and the clever. It gives you a little hint of what was higher on the lever. It wasn't clever like cunning. It was clever like intelligent, smart, uh, the ones to which people paid respect. You haven't revealed yourself to the ones who are high in the culture. You've revealed yourself to the lowest. You've revealed them to the little children. The Greek word there is literally babies. Jesus meant not that God reveals himself to the young in age, but that whatever the age, if we come with a childlike humility in our approach to God, he will reveal himself to us. Babies in the vocabulary of Jesus are sincere and humble seekers of truth. For everybody else, Jesus says, God hides himself. If you're out to find God for your purposes and your glory and your betterment, God's not interested in that. But if you're out to find God to give him glory, what he's interested in is your benefit. It's interesting If we approach it from our own state, we'll do it on our own power. But when we humbly come to God and say, God, I'm interested in what you have for me, and I'm interested in you receiving the glory for it. I'm completely dependent on what you offer me, and that's enough for me. That's a baby. In those moments, he reveals himself. When we stand on our proud pedestal with with our with our spectacles at the end of our nose, to scrutinize and criticize God and people and everything else, when we declare that we have all of the answers, we'll never find him. If on the other hand, we step down from those platforms and we humble ourselves and we confess our liability, we discover him and we read the gospels with an open and unprejudiced minds of a little child and God reveals himself to those, spiritually speaking, who are little children hungry for information, love, reception. When we come in a way That glorifies him. For those of you around, quite often you hear me pray all the t- uh, pretty much every Sunday or every time we get together that he would be honored by what we say and do. I really like it when you come to church. I really like it when we're together. I loved yesterday when we were hanging out doing construction-y stuff or clean-y stuff. I watched people, I watched people like, go the extra mile, take things apart to clean, off the, clean out the inside, the back part of a, of a wall that no one will ever see. And I loved it. I loved how much you love your church. I love how much we love our church and serve together. But this isn't about me feeling better. That's not the point. It's about coming to find community where we honor Jesus. And so that, in that... 
in the, in the foundation of those two statements, when Jesus declares who he is and declares how God wants to engage us, he then in, has an invitation. Jesus invites us to come to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. The very first step towards Jesus is a frank and humble admission that we need him. Nothing keeps people away from Jesus more than an arrogance and an unwillingness to acknowledge that we need him. When we don't need him, we don't find him. And this isn't like a, this isn't like a one time I need to find God so I make this statement. It's an everyday thing. It was me last Sunday. Last Sunday, David uh, developed a kidney stone, and I've had kidney stones. Those are terrible, terrible, terrible things. They're, they're, they're terrible. They're, they're the devil. And at 5, I think it's at 5.49, he texted me, uh, I'm having kidney stone issues, and I knew David's not going to be at church today. And I started to be aware of all the things that my agenda was now affected by. By the way, I apologize for that. And I drove here. And I'm getting here and I'm processing for how we're going to do it. And I'm going to have to make the keyboard taller because I, I don't like to sit and play and all this kind of stuff. And I'm driving down the road and I feel like the Lord say to me, you could be frustrated right now, or you could be thankful what God's doing in your church. Because I keep getting people tell me that prayers are being answered, and friends are coming, and people are coming back to church. There's a million amazing things that's happening at our church, and I could be focused on my frustration, or I could be focused on what God is doing at our church. But in order for me to do that, I need to recognize, God, it's not about me, it's about you. I'm burdened by what I got going on, but I come to you anyway. I need God. When I need God, I'm more apt to come to him. And when I need God, Jesus says, come to me. It's an open invitation. What does Jesus offer with this invitation? He offers uh, an ease of a, of a burden. He offers rest. He offers freedom. No one can do that but Christ because he has bur carried all the burdens there is to bear. And so I, he's strong enough to take mine. And when I, give, <laughs> when I give into him, I'm free. Here's what we do sometimes, myself included. We give it to God and then we take it back. And Jesus says, come, leave it with me. Let, you carry my stuff. And my stuff's light and easy. Jesus offers freedom. He, when we come to him, he will lift our burden. The very essence of the Christian good news, the almighty God loves us in spite of all the reasons to make us unlovable. In spite of all the decisions that may seem to, uh, to make us disapproved. He loves us. He comes after us in the person of Jesus. He took our nature on him. He became a human being. He lived the perfect life. He had no sin. He had no sin. So he had no penalty. And yet, on the grounds of my sin, he took the penalty. So I don't have to. If we come to him, he will lift the burden and give us rest. You know what we're really bad at, by the way? Rest. We don't really know how to do that. And so for some of us, it's a struggle that he, it's even an offer because I don't really know what rest means because I never stop. And when we stop, you know what doesn't stop? Our minds. You know how hard it is for some of us to quiet our minds? So Jesus has come and I'll give you rest. And here's a prayer I'll encourage you to pray. God, 
Help me to learn how to be at rest. Because we've lived our whole lives being told and buying into that it all depends on us. God partners with us. And he takes the supplies for 150 boxes and somehow turns them into 208. And 120 children in Cambodia and however many show up and there's boxes. Because God, in the midst of of his offering of rest, offers supplies and he takes care of the burdens and he takes care of the provision and he takes all the care of all the things we've been told. We're the ones we have to take care of that. And so Jesus invites us to come. And some people try to make it complicated being engrossed in the externals of religion and all the rules. And so they, they have rules that, that you come to Jesus, but with all this stuff, you got to do this, you got to wear this, you got that. Jesus says, just come. In fact, one time Jesus was trying to let people come and the disciples were like, you guys are too young. You can't go to Jesus. And that's where Jesus gets bold, kind of slaps his disciples upside the head, says, let the little children come to me. In fact, let everybody come to me as a little child. And then he invites, the the second invitation is take my yoke upon you and learn from me. The Christian, I marvel at the balance of the Bible. The Christian life is not just about living an easy life. It's not about taking it easy. It's not about enjoying rest. We do enjoy rest, but it's not about that. When we come to Christ, when we come to Christ, he eases our uh, our burden and then he fits his yoke on us. The two invitations of Jesus belong together. We don't really have the option to pick and choose between them. So what is the yoke of Jesus? Well, a yoke, most of you will know. It's a, it's a horizontal wooden bar laid on the, the back of oxen as they pull a plow. You can see this in Amish country. At least that's what I was told when I was a little kid. The Jews spoke of the, the Torah, the, the law, as a yoke. And so when Jesus is talking to these Jewish people, he talks about the yoke, they felt the weight of the law. And Jesus is like, no, 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 take my yoke. It's it's easy. Burden is light. And he says, learn from me. To take up the yoke of Jesus is to enter his school, to become his disciple, to regard him not only as savior, but as Lord and teacher, which includes submitting our minds and our wills to him, to bring all of our life under his control. It's a complete submission. And for some of us, that sounds hard. And if that's you, you're not alone. Because it goes against everything we've been taught. The Christian life is not a set of rules. It's a system that leads to liberation. Because the burden we lose when we come to Christ is heavy, but the burden we gain when we come to Christ is light. Jesus is inviting us to come to him and learn from him to find the way to freedom. He says, I'm humble and gentle at heart. You have nothing to fear. Jesus is a patient, gentle Lord. And he lays an er easy, light yoke, an easy, light burden. Here's what it says. Here's the burden that Jesus says. Trust me with everything. Just some takeaways as we get ready to, to, to go to baptism. And just to give you a sense of what to expect, we're gonna, our band's going to come, we're going to sing a song, invite you to stand and participate as they do that. Not necessarily right now, but that's going to happen. And our first group of people are going to go get ready to be baptized. We're going to baptize a couple of them, and we're going to sing another song. When we do that, I encourage you to stand again, participate. Um, and worship, and then we'll baptize some more people. But some takeaways as we get there. 
First takeaway, we are called to be imitators of Jesus. Ephesians 5.1 says, follow God's example, therefore, as, clear, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. We are imitating Jesus when we invite others to come. And we're not a concern about the weight that they carry and how it impacts us. You have people in your life who have anxiety, who are burdened, who just are weighed down by the weight of life, invite them into your community. Not with any costs, not with any parameters, come. When we invite people to come, we're being just like Jesus. How do we invite people to come? We share our stories with people. You're not alone. Everything in, the, in this world is telling you you're the only one who, doesn't, who feels this way, who's going through these trials, who has these struggles, who is that way. No, 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 you're not alone. Let me share my story of my struggles so that we can relate, so the other person can find peace from what comes with Jesus. We do, where do we do that? We do it at the table. Invite people, come to the table. Our stories reveal Jesus to people. Jesus is part of my story. I was, I found Jesus, I am. When we share our story, people see Jesus. We're not responsible for how people respond to our story or our offer to come. How, they, how people respond to you, they could say no to your offer. But they might say yes. And when you invite them and you begin to share your story and you, please, please, please hear their story. People who are carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders need a place to share that story. And when you hear it and you present yours and you say, here's what I found when I was in a similar situation, Jesus made it better. When you invite people in, you see, we invite, when you invite somebody to the table, you're inviting them to more than a seat. The seat probably has some food, so you're providing a meal, that's nice. But when you invite somebody to the table, when you invite somebody in, you're inviting them in to community. When you invite them into, the commu into community, there's hope there. There's Jesus there. There's an opportunity for people to experience the life-changing things that you've experienced and that we all have. So how do you invite somebody? You ask them to come. Well, what if they say no? What if they say yes? Nobody's fear. Please, if they say no, don't let your feelings be hurt. It's like a pizza. Not the biggest eater of pizza. I know it's shocking to look at me, but pizza comes with eight slices. You offer it to somebody, they say no, that's on them. But it's pizza, who's saying no to pizza? You invite somebody to come to your table. You invite somebody to church. You invite somebody into the things that we have. They say no, that's okay. God's working on their heart too. Wherever they are in their, their journey. But if we, don't offer, if we don't offer the invitation, how can they get here? Would you pray with me? Jesus, I thank you that you invite us to come, to join you. And so as we journey, as we journey in our worlds this week, I pray that we would extend invitations. That first we would come to you, that we would place our burdens on you, and then that we, like you, we would be imitators of you and would find opportunities to invite other people in.
that it wouldn't be about our agenda or our anything, but it would be about our extension of friendship, our, our imitation of you, and that you would be honored by everything we say and do. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand. We're going to sing a chorus, and uh, we're going to get ready for our first round of, of baptisms.